Well, Baku continues to not disappoint year over year. That was an amazing qualifying session. <laughs> Lots of crazy stuff happened. Tons of people in positions we didn't necessarily think they would be in. But before we get started, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and let's get into this. Okay, so first, Ferrari. Very, very, very good. And keep in mind, Ferrari had awful, awful Friday. Leclerc put it into the wall, and then his FP2 session was interrupted by still trying to get over what happened in FP1, figuring out if the car was uh, actually bent or damaged or some sort of way. They actually had it in bits and pieces through FB2. So he, Leclerc really didn't have a good prep Friday. And to put it on pole, and not just a little bit on pole, yes, it's a very big track, so there's lots of places for other people to make mistakes, but he was three tenths up on everybody else. Speaking of that, let us take a look at where everybody placed. You can see three tenths up. Everybody else, though, very close. And one thing I will note, because it is such a big track, the top 10 only separated by 1.4 seconds. But keep in mind, this is a huge track. This isn't a Monaco or Austria or anything like that. This is this is a humongous track. So for second through to kind of six to only be three tenths away from each other is a pretty big deal. And we'll, we see here that like Formula B not too far behind of everybody else. Very interesting to see in the top 10. So Charles, Oscar, Carlos, Sergio, George, Max, Lewis, Fernando, Franco, and Alexander. Now the main person you notice that isn't there is Lando down in 17th. Pretty awful result from him. P2 for Oscar, great result. I think he really extracted a lot from that car. The McLarens throughout the weekend so far haven't looked the fastest. Ferrari, like I said in uh, some of the videos I did up to this, the, the why Baku is important and the preview for this race is that this is basically just an extension. This is this is Monza the street circuit. It is really, really fast. So straight line speed is important. And that package that Ferrari brought to Monza last race really does apply here too. They were the quickest by far, but the McLarens, okay. The car seems fairly good. Again, they have this weird strategy in the practice sessions where they're really not pushing the car very much. I don't know if it's trying to save critical parts or if they're just not worried about it and that that is their basic setup for Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, but once they did extract what they could from the car, uh, Oscar was there to do it. Uh, Norris looked nowhere in comparison to him even when he was on pace, so uh, very odd. But let's get down into the main story that I want to go over here. So Norris, P17. So this is Planet F1's little calculator thing. You can go on to Planet F1, just type in Planet F1 Championship Calculator. It comes up and it allows you to put in where you think everybody's going to place or where you think the top four are going to place in the next few races. And it gives you an idea of what that's going to look like out in a graph here. So keep in mind for this little comparison here, don't take uh, Charles Leclerc or Oscar Piastri's uh, results here too much into it. At least I, I guessed where everybody's going to finish for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, but everywhere else, I just put randomly Oscar Piastri and Charles Leclerc in third and fourth. Doesn't really matter. All I'm worried about right now for this comparison is Max and Lando comparison. So where do they have to finish in order for that to happen? For this race coming up, I predict that Max will be fifth. It really does depend on long runs for the Mercedes, whether he gets up that far, and also what happens with uh, Perez, who starts off in fourth, where what they'll do. Uh, I, Red Bull hasn't lost all their cutthroatness. I suspect if Max gets anywhere near Perez, they'll tell Perez to get out of the way, just for fighting championship purposes. Uh, I imagine Lando will be able to work his way through the field. Azerbaijan is not hard to pass. The McLaren is very slippery in, in a straight line. I would hope that he would be able to get up to the back of the Formula A, but like I mentioned, Formula A and Formula B are starting to become a blurred line as the end of this season approaches. I don't know if he'll have the pace. It really will depend on lap one. And as we know, Lando is not that good at lap one, at least not from the first place position. Uh, Leclerc, I, I think he'll win, but again, Leclerc is almost as bad as Lando on lap one. His pole to win uh, conversion rate is really, really quite bad. I think it's still in the 20%. So let's not, uh, most of that is not his fault. Uh, a lot of it is down to that uh, Ferrari the past couple years, but uh, I suspect that he'll be able to keep that win. So I, I put Max in fifth and Lando in eighth. That is 
in with Met Lando with the fastest lap, I think this right here is the best result that Lando can hope, hope for. Obviously the best result with Max being crashed out first lap and Lando being able to go by him. If everybody, everything goes kind of to plan for Lando for Sunday, this is the best result he can muster. So, and then what I did for the rest of the races, I just made Lando first and Max second with Lando taking the fastest lap every race. Uh, is that going to happen? 100% not. The McLarens are clearly not up there when it comes to pace anymore. At least not at every track. It's really, really hard to tell. This whole season is flopping back and forth. It's all down to development and whether the upgrades you bring push you forward. We see every time that McLaren brings an update, Miami, they bring updates and they get a little bit faster. And then same for Ferrari. If they, br they brought a big update to Monza and suddenly they're now, in my opinion anyway, one of the fastest cars out there. So all I did is fill that all in and when we come down to the bottom, you can see Lando loses by eight points. So the F1 gods will need to have an intervention before uh, Lando were to win this championship. Most people say that unless some intervention happens, he's not going to win, and therefore he won't be a good champion. Ah, I don't necessarily disagree with that. Uh, it would have to be a pretty ridiculous last seven races for him for that to happen. Obviously, it would need some sort of intervention. I think the intervention's already happened with Red Bull screwing up their car. Uh, so much in the last last half of this season. So let's keep going though. I just thought that was interesting to see that because Lando finished in 17th today and if he doesn't extract maximum points in eighth place, that we're going to see Lando lose the championship. But this is like crutch kind of stuff here. So uh, let's go over that lap though. Uh, so when Lando came around, the team, he said he got a yellow flag for a con. But when he came by, the yellow flag was gone. Sky did a, a little piece on this just while it was going on, and they noted that the yellow flag was when Lando was coming by Akon, although the yellow flag was like following Akon because he had a mess up in a corner and then it was kind of following him around because he was going really, really slow. We've seen Akon have engine issues uh, throughout the weekend, so that was kind of maybe they thought that his engine, engine conked out and they were kind of falling around. Turns out he was just going really slow for some reason. He got a white flag. White flag means that there is a slow car ahead. It doesn't mean you need to slow down. It doesn't, not not single, it, yellow is slow down and you're not allowed to use DRS. Double waved yellows means you need to be prepared to stop. It was a white flag just to say that somebody is off the track. Not off the track as in uh, they've crashed or they've gone over the white line. They're just going slowly to give you a little bit of a warning. They usually use it at street circuits like this where there's lots of blind corners. You don't see white flags anywhere else really that much that we talk about anyway. So I think it was a error by both Norris and by the team because when he went by, I think, I'm pretty sure, he would have been able to keep going, keep with his lap going. Although it wasn't a great lap, but I suspect it might have got him out of Q3, which wouldn't have been that hard. Keep in mind there were only 19 drivers. Zhao wasn't out putting in any sort of drive, uh, laps in there so it only had to be four people overall you shouldn't have been in that position to begin with why are you out with only one lap to go in q1 it's the track evolution is is ridiculous here it's up and down all over the place but you don't need to do that it's a very quick car go put a really fast lap out don't think about it anymore there was a couple of people up near the top that didn't need to do that like they were not in some sort of contention where it wouldn't happen and we saw Perez get this right this weekend there was a couple times where he didn't need to go out and still made it through that's what you need to do this is an error by McLaren not a track issue shouldn't have been in that position to start with speaking of Red Bull fourth and sixth again not very good uh, very similar to what it was in Monza the car is quick but its drivability is ridiculous. I saw understeer, I saw oversteer, I saw slow in a straight line, and then I saw really fast in a straight line. It just seems like the balancing act of getting this car set up is almost too much for anybody. And it's just whether you throw, close your eyes and throw the dart at the dartboard, whether you get it right. That's not to say that Checo wasn't great today. He beat Max for the first time in 2024, at least, and for a really, really long time, looked like he was faster than Max on merit alone. I will say, though, he was quite upset. So if we go to this, this is uh, Checo as he was leaving his car, and he 
not angrily, but he hits, he hits the tire, just kind of upset that he didn't get more out of the car. I still think that he's pretty good at street circuits, not as much as everybody really thinks so, but uh, around Baku, he's great, but Leclerc over one lap has always been quick here and continues to put in poles around Azerbaijan. Uh, this little section here I want to show you, uh, this is the first lap in Q3 by Verstappen and why Perez was able to do a better lap than him. This is his coming around the last effective corner and just beaching it and uh, like almost crashing. He has kind of really only two tires touching anything right now because he is beached so hard. That was very nearly a crash and that would have changed the face of the championship because if you had a pretty bad crash around here to get that car turned around with no issues would have been ridiculous. I think Red Bull just really is not on it. Not a fault of either of the drivers to be honest. If they hit a fast car they would just be up further and it's not that it isn't fast it's just really hard to balance. It is not the car you want to be driving right now. Franco Colapinto, I mentioned this in the preview, and I still think it is the correct thing to do. We saw that this is, hasn't happened since 2022. If Alexander Ambon got beaten by uh, his teammate. Like, Franco Colapinto is fast, and not just one time fast. He was fast through Q1, Q2. He was faster in Q2 than Albon by four tenths, like a lot, and faster in Q3. Now, Albon didn't get to do his last lap, which we'll get into here in a second. Bizarre. Uh, but I think Franco Colapinto obviously is the guy when it comes to um, Williams. Great move by them to replace Sargent with Colapinto. You were going to see that cutthroatness that I talked about last video really paying off for them. They saw a driver that was slow, they replaced him with somebody else, and they got a good result. Great result. And he was on it. Despite, again, he was just like Leclerc had a little mess up into Friday and, and put it into the wall. So again, this is a result from not having the car sussed out as much as he should have. So really, really comes back to some of the videos I did over the break when I was comparing uh, Carlos Sainz to Albon, what they're c coming up to in 2025, what their history is. Carlos Sainz has fought against tons of good drivers in Hulkenberg, Claire and Norris and Verstappen. He's taken tons of time to develop his craft and we really see a history there where he can take it to drivers, not always winning, but getting really close over the years. And where Albon really hasn't driven against anybody with any merit. He only was Verstappen's teammate for half a year. And then he was with Sargent, and then he was with Latifi. So there's really no kind of comparison for Albon in such a long time to see where he is. And I think this is a great thing. Either Franco Colapinto is amazing, or Alex Albon isn't as fast as we thought he was. This is Alexander Albon. I captured this as it was going on because it was so bizarre. The team left the air cooler in the top box. So for those of you who don't know, this little day glow yellow piece on the top of the car here is not normal to see there it is filled with dry ice and it's got a little fan on it and it blows cold air into the engine while they're waiting to go out so it doesn't overheat they left it in i mean i am actually legally blind and i can see that fucking thing there i wouldn't have missed it the thing is like massive this is another uh, little clip <laughs> And he actually was able to pull it out, set it down on the side of the car, and then push it off the white line. So, him doing that, like, you can't just grab your wing mirror, break it off, and throw it onto the track. That would be illegal. You're not allowed to do that. I believe he will get a penalty. I haven't seen anything. We're going to check right now live to see if, he, if anything's shown up there. But uh, this is obviously a huge thing from Williams. How you would miss that? I mean, there are... There's a person for each one of those things, one for each wheel, there's one for the driver, there's one for the data thing, like they have two screens in front of them when they're sitting in the pits, one guy to pull that up, there's one guy to pull that thing out of there, there's a guy for the back of the car, there is a, there's two people on the wall to tell them when to send the car out, there's the whole pit wall along the, uh, along the side of the track that are watching, and there's also the main guy who's in front of the, ja the front jack man, who is really in charge of when they all get to go, how they all miss that. Like there's a good 25 to 35 people in that garage box at any one time. How they all miss that and let him keep going. Like if they, all they have to do is stop him before the white line 
as you're coming out of the pits. And they're allowed to keep touching the car. It's part of the rules. You can see them all out there when they're about to come out, fanning down the brakes and stuff like that. You're allowed to touch the car in that situation. And how they all missed it and he went anyway is beyond me. You'd have to be like idiots, basically idiots. Hilarious though to see it. I've never, I can't remember if I've ever seen that before. The closest thing I can think of, like wrong tires, I suppose we saw, but not like from the pits. We've seen drivers come in and get wrong sets of tires. Operationally, that's the only thing I can really think of. Who was that? That was Lewis had COVID. Russell came up to drive for him in 2020, might have been 2020, I'm not sure, uh, and came to, and Botas came in, and then Russell came in, and they had the wrong tire sets. Austin Martin, P8 and P15, Stroll, very not happy with the car this weekend. Obviously, it's kind of a dog on the track. He said in one little quote, uh, this is not a car anymore, and like, I mean, the commentators were quite funny, they're like, actually, we can see quite clearly, it is still a car. But what he was saying is it's not really anything he wants to drive anymore. Uh, but Alonso in Q2 was P5, which was pretty amazing for that car. It is not good. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I think Formula B is starting to catch up to the rest of Formula A. Those diminishing returns of bringing all that development is really not doing anything for them. So the lower down teams can literally just copy what they see from the other cars and gain so much more than any sort of new development that you get in the top four teams. So the fact that Austin Martin is sort of, at least in this sort of situation, catching back up with Fernando Alonso and Williams is catching back up and the Haas were actually quite quite good as well. Although Williams and the Haas are very efficient cars as far as aerodynamically goes, so it doesn't take them much to do that. It's mostly down to their PUs, I think, and the way that they use that kind of stuff. But great to see Fernando Alonso up there. I'm sure he'll be fighting for points. Not good for uh, Norris because Alonso is Quite scrappy to get around, same with Albon, and I suspect that Calapinto will not be a pushover either, so that will be the biggest challenges for him. Let us take a look and see what we see here. Uh, qualifying lap deleted, qualifying classification, alleged unsafe condition, 1526. Let's bring that up, see what it is. Alexander Albon, and international supporting code, potential release of 23, and I mean, it's not potential, literally unsafe condition at 1658, and the discard of cooling equipment. So you can't just go with cooling equipment on your car and throw it off track. Now what he can't do and why he wouldn't have been able to put in his final run is he can't ask the marshals to help him. If they touch the car, including the cooling stuff, in any way, he would be out of Q3. Now he went to go around the track and he didn't get his lap in anyway, so I don't know that he'll get a penalty? He could potentially get a grid place penalty? I don't know. It's very... This hasn't really happened before. <laughs> it, was a, it would be... So ridiculous to see anything come out like this. Usually you have to stop on track. What else can I think of? Uh, drivers in the old days when they used to refuel the cars would leave the pit lane having torn their uh, fueler off from the wall and just kind of drove out on track. But in that case, they have to stop and get out because but because it was such a weird thing and he was able to take it out himself and throw it out of the car. I don't know. I don't know where this will go with. Who do we got? Johnny Herbert. He'll remember refueling. Tim Mayer, I don't know the other two. Hard to say what they'll what they'll go with that. He could get a grid pace penalty, which would mean that uh, he wouldn't be starting up. I can't imagine he'd get more than like a three place grid penalty or something like that, but hard to say. Could be just a fine. He, they could throw it his time, but he still would be P10. So hard to see what we'll see from that. Aside from that, the whole qualifying session was absolutely amazing. Great to see from everybody. Hopefully we'll see a good race tomorrow. Enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.